Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, back with another video. So, I wasn't able to do a post-fight review for the Josh Taylor-Jack Catterall fight last night. I was over at a family member's house, we all watched the fight together. And, of course, I jumped on a couple of live streams when I got in. So, I wasn't really able to take the time to sit down and produce a video, so I never bothered making one. So instead I'm going to do a aftermath video here, basically, just talk about a few things. Now, I don't particularly want to talk too much about the fight itself, because if I'm being perfectly honest, I pretty much summed up my thoughts on it, on those live streams, on, on Mark's live and Thunderdome's live, and I'm kind of sick of talking about it at this point. So, what I mostly wanted to talk about is what I think is going to happen from here on, um, a few things about Josh Taylor, and his development, and where he goes from here, and the same for Jack Catterall, so... Let's talk about it. Now, we all know what happened in the fight. It was a very, very horrendous, ugly fight. One of the one of the worst fights I've seen in the past couple of years. And it was poorly officiated start to finish. Let's be perfectly honest about it. But the reaction that I've been seeing to uh, Josh Taylor's performance in particular and how he looked in the fight, I've seen it all before. You know, I've been watching boxing a very long time. I'm not that old, okay? I'm only 27. I'm almost 28, but I'm only 27. And um, I've been watching boxing the majority of my life, I would say. And I've been a hardcore fan for, I would say, about 15 years or so. So, I've seen this, uh, this scenario before. What I'm talking about is when you get a fighter who has a tremendous amount of high regard with boxing fans, somebody who has... People have high hopes for, you know, and Josh Taylor's definitely one of those guys. When a fighter like that is at a particular stage of his career where he's on top of the world, he's champion, he's considered the best guy in his division, one of the best fighters in the world by many boxing fans and by the boxing media at large. When he comes up against a guy who he's expected to walk through, a guy who isn't expected to be on his level, and when he doesn't perform, or when he loses, or looks very bad, what often happens is, in hindsight, a lot of people write that fighter off, and that's what I'm seeing from Josh Taylor now, going into the fight, I mean, it's interesting to me how everybody's a bloody genius after the fight, going into this fight, pretty much, not, not everybody, but the vast majority of people that I spoke to said that Jack Catterall was complete garbage, that he was an easy opponent, that he struggled with O'Hara Davis, who Josh Taylor demolished easily, and he was too small, he wasn't he wasn't powerful enough, um, and he was just going to go in there and shit the bed and get and get walked down and stopped in five rounds. He was going to get. I even saw people say he was going to get blown away in three rounds and stuff like that. A lot of really, um, a lot of people were really dismissing, oh, um, Jack Catterall, and they were saying that Josh Taylor, because he was able to beat the likes of Ramirez and Progre and guys like that, that Catterall really just wasn't on his level, and that he was just going to walk through him, right? Too big, too strong, too powerful, easy fight, right? Mismatch. That's what, that's what pretty much everybody that I spoke to before this fight was saying. And, you know, when I was, when I was talking to people on live streams about the fight, it kind of became a bit of a running joke that this was... Uh, a fight that Taylor just wants to get out of the way so he can go and fight Crawford next and, and this, that and the other. What was I saying? If you go and look at my breakdown for this fight, I did a long breakdown for this one and I was in many comment sections, I talked about the fight on many live streams. What did I say about this fight from day one? Did I say it was a mismatch? Did I say that Jack Catterall was shit? Did I say that Taylor was going to go in there and destroy him? No, I never said that once, did I? No, I said from day one that Jack Catterall, because like I said, I've been watching boxing a long time and I'm able to see certain things. Jack Catterall hasn't shown us what he's made of yet. All right, I said from day one, Jack Catterall, it's very, very possible, is going to rise to the occasion. That it's very, very possible that all the fights he's had where he's been going through the motions and just getting the rounds in were really just like sparring with just preparation, just practice, and when he goes in that ring with a fight of genuine consequence, then we're going to see what he's made of, all right, that was what I was basically alluding to the whole time, and I was also, 
letting my concerns be known that because of the amount of pressure that's being put on Josh Taylor, or should I really say the amount of pressure he's put on himself with his attitude and his arrogance, there's there's every possibility here that this is going to be a tough night for him. I always felt the fight was most likely going to go the distance, and I always felt that Josh Taylor would win on points, which is officially what happened. Whatever you think about the decision, <laughs> that's officially what happened. But the point is, I never thought this was an easy fight. I never thought that he was going to go in there and destroy Jack Catterall. And the people before this fight who were blowing smoke up Josh Taylor's arse and telling me that it was an easy fight, telling me Taylor's too good, he's too powerful, he's going to smash this guy, are now saying, in hindsight, they're now saying that Taylor has been exposed that Taylor is shit, that he can't fight, that he can't box, that he's nothing but a weight bully who uses his size, and as soon as he fights any top 10 contender at welterweight, he's going to get knocked out, you know, Crawford's going to destroy him, um, I'm hearing people like Timothy Bradley and Andre Ward say things like, pound for pound fighters, I, I don't even understand what you mean by the term pound for pound fighter, but whatever, they're saying pound for pound fighters, don't struggle with mandatories, you know, they're, they're also saying that basically Taylor uh, shouldn't have accepted the victory and he should have, he should have handed the belts to Catterall and it was a disgrace, you know, it's funny, this is the same Tim Bradley who got bitch slapped by Manny Pacquiao and lost something like 10 rounds to two and then got the decision and chimped out afterwards and was flipping out all over the place uh, saying it was an easy fight and he clearly won um, and, and never, never once conceded that he got a gift. This is the same Timothy Bradley, of course. This is the same Andre Ward that got an absolute boxing lesson, got dropped and dominated by Sergei Kovalev, was given a gift decision, stole Kovalev's titles, and then said it was a piece of cake and that he clearly won. I mean, <laughs> I mean, hearing guys like those two being... Um, uh, taking the moral high ground over Josh Taylor getting a hometown decision. I thought that was quite funny, but I digress. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about is all the people that are now writing Josh Taylor off and are saying that he's complete shit, that he's been exposed, and going forward it's over for him. He's going to get destroyed, you know? I've seen it all before. I've heard it all before, okay? I've been following boxing a long time, and I've seen this scenario play out time and time again. And you know what, guys? I know what I see. I told you guys early on in Josh Taylor's career when I was watching this guy fight that this guy has a tremendous amount of potential. What I was seeing in Josh Taylor in the early part of his career when he was being trained by Shane McGuigan, I saw the best inside fighter that I've ever seen in British boxing. This guy was doing things you don't see from British fighters. The way that he was developing... The way he was able to get inside on these guys, pivot, land perfectly well-placed hooks and uppercuts to the body from close range, smother his opponents, step to the side, his timing, his accuracy, everything was phenomenal. I saw a truly great fighter in the making, and he continued to prove me right with every fight, becoming undisputed champion in 18 professional fights on the fast track, something that's never been done in the history of British boxing. Now he's had a tough fight against a domestic level guy who came up through the ranks the hard way, who's been world ranked for many years, some, since something like 2015, this guy's been a world ranked contender, Jack Catterall, who hasn't really had his big moment yet, hasn't really had a genuine fight of consequence. Taylor has one fight where he looks poor, gets dropped and arguably loses, and everybody's writing him off. All of a sudden, the people who were blowing smoke up his ass before are saying he's going to get destroyed when he fights somebody. Now, what I saw from the fight is I saw Josh Taylor in a situation where he's regressed. I definitely think this needs to be a wake-up call. It needs to be a reality check. And he needs to get back to his fundamentals. Because like I said before, earlier in Josh's career, he was the best inside fighter I've ever seen in British boxing. The way he fought against Jack Catterall, he was a face-first, flat-footed slugger. 
All right, he looked like Dave Allen in there. Like, like he was, it was literally like Dave Allen. It was a dreadful performance from Josh Taylor. I think that Ben Davidson, and I said this from day one. Right, you can go and watch my videos. I said from day one, Ben Davis is the worst trainer in British boxing. And I really, really think, and, and people said I was wrong at the time. People disagreed with me. Now all of a sudden they agree. I said from day one, Taylor should never have left the McGuigans. It was a big mistake. His development under Shane McGuigan was improving fight by fight, despite the lack of experience. He was fighting world-class, undefeated fighters back to back, and he was improving. Now, he's regressed, because he has a trainer that doesn't suit him. He's starving himself now to suit a division that just he just can't make anymore, okay, he's 31 years old, he could make 140 when he was 25, he can't make that weight division now at 31, okay, and, and I know that Josh Taylor talks a lot of crap about how he makes the weight easily, he makes it comfortable, I don't believe it for a second, okay, that's, that's the same crap that Alex Arthur used to come out with back in the day when he was fighting at super featherweight, he used to say, oh, it's easy, I make the weight comfortably, then when he finally moved up to lightweight, he admitted that that was that he was full of shit. He admitted that he couldn't make super featherweight, and he was absolutely starving himself, and that boxing had been all about making weight for years. I suspect that there's an element of that with Taylor. I suspect the majority of his training camp for this Catterall fight was all about making weight. So, why am I bringing all this up? I've seen so many fighters in the past who were on a pedestal, who were very highly regarded, Take on a guy they're supposed to beat easily, either lose or look terrible, and come back to not only win a title, but come back to do legendary things in the sport. Vladimir Klitschko, one of my favourite fighters ever, um, not a big fan of him as a, as a <laughs> his political ideology, or as a person, but as a fighter, I love the guy. Vladimir Klitschko got demolished, demolished inside of two rounds by a past his prime, Corey Sanders, he got embarrassingly beaten in that fight, bounced up and down off the canvas, and stopped in two rounds, he was completely written off, he, he had no chin, he's a bum, he's got no heart, he's got no stamina, he's crap, right, he's gonna get destroyed when he fights anybody good, what happened, he went on to become the most dominant heavyweight champion in the history of the, of the, of the sport, Right, dominated the heavyweight division for over a decade. This is after being completely written off. Okay? Manny Pacquiao. I remember. I remember being so sad about it at the time. Because I was, I was a huge Manny Pacquiao fan at the time. And he was absolutely knocked unconscious. Knocked spark out by Juan Manuel Marquez, his rival. And everybody, including me, wrote him off. Everybody wrote him off. Nobody thought... That he was ever going to come back. Okay, he's done. His career's over. He's going to retire. If he comes back, he's going to have no chin. He's going to be shook mentally. And he's, he's going to be finished. What happened? Manny Pacquiao came back. Won two more world titles. Beat several unbeaten um, top 10 ranked guys. The, the, the likes of Keith Thurman, for example. An unbeaten world champion at the top of his game. Manny Pacquiao came back and shocked the world. And had several great performances, showing he had some great performances left in him, okay, Nonito Donaire, how many times was Nonito Donaire, Donaire written off, okay, Nonito Donaire got an absolute pasting from Guillermo Rigondeau, got knocked out cold by, by Nicholas Walters, had numerous terrible performances where he looked completely shot-worn, well, of course, Nonito Donaire came back and is now one of the best fighters in his division, even now, so, I've, I've seen it time and time again, Joe Calzaghe, when he was champion, you know, he, he had a horrendous fight against Robin Reed, where a lot of people thought he lost, right, he got hurt several times, got stunned, you know, he was dropped, and taken the distance against the likes of Kabari Salem, guys that he was a massive, massive favourite to beat, what happened? He came back and became the greatest super middleweight champion of all time, so, I've, I've seen this happen time and time again in boxing, okay, I know what I see, I followed Josh Taylor very early in his career, 
I know what he can do. I know how good he is. Okay? I'm not going to jump off the bandwagon and show all this ridiculous pretense and start talking about how he's a hype job and all this other stuff based on one bad performance. Predictably, because this is how boxing fans are, I saw a lot of comments, people saying, if that was Terence Crawford in there, imagine what he would have done. Um, these are the people who said that Taylor would beat Crawford? You know, all, all, the, all, the, all the clowns saying, oh, well, if, if Taylor struggles with Jack Catterall, that means that, that Terence Crawford will blow him away in a couple of... <laughs> I, I even saw people say that that um, Javante Davis would knock out Josh Taylor. <laughs> completely dismissing who Jack Catterall is as a fighter. Let's Let's just completely ignore who he is. Let's just pretend that, that he's nobody, right? And let's just look at that fight and completely write Taylor off. As if Terence Crawford has never had a close fight. As if Terence Crawford has never struggled in a fight. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Terence Crawford comprehensively getting outboxed by Igis Kavalowskis? Wasn't Terence Crawford knocked down in that fight? Wasn't he getting roughed up? Wasn't he getting pieced up, and then had to grit his teeth and use his physical strength to break the guy down and stop him? Wasn't Terence Crawford getting getting soundly outboxed for consecutive rounds against Amir Khan? A shot Amir Khan? Wasn't Terence Crawford behind, in, in, in a lot of people's opinion, against Sean Porter? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was. It's not as if, it's not as if Terence Crawford and I'm not saying that he deserves a heck of a lot of criticism for those fights. I'm just saying it's not as if Terence Crawford has had everything his own way. It's not as if every single fight he's ever been in, he's dominated every single minute of every round, okay? Wasn't he getting outboxed by Uriorkis Gamboa? A man who is literally half his size? I mean, guys, like I said, I've seen it so many times. Every time one of these fighters who gets put on a pedestal prematurely, has a tough fight, everybody writes them off. You're, you're telling me that Josh Taylor, who beat Regis Progre, who beat Victor Postal, who beat Ivan Baranchik, who beat Jose Ramirez, who beat all those guys, who absolutely obliterated everybody he fought domestically prior to this fight, you're telling me that after having one fight where he looks poor and doesn't perform that that means that he's a hype job. I'm, I'm seeing the term hype job thrown around left, right, and center. Well, I'm not a fair weather boxing fan, okay? I've been supporting Josh Taylor from early on because I know what I see. And I saw a guy who had genuine talent. And when several people were telling me that I was crazy back then, back in 2016, for saying that this guy was the best fighter in Britain, right? people said I was, I was being premature that I was talking shit, and I told you guys to just wait and see, I'm going to tell you guys that again, just wait and see, let's wait and see how Josh Taylor looks in his next fight, a lot of changes have to be made, he has to move up to welterweight, I don't give a shit what he says about, he made, he had a pizza after the weigh-in, and a Pepsi, and all this nonsense, I don't care, alright, it's the same nonsense that a lot of other fighters in the past used to say, before they admitted that they could no longer make the weight, Taylor knows he can't make the weight anymore, and he has to move up to welterweight. He's fought at welterweight before, by the way, and he looked very good when he did. So, I expect him to, in his next fight, make a few changes. Gotta get rid of Ben Davidson. I've said that from day one. He's not a good trainer. I'm sorry. I've got nothing against the guy. He seems like a nice guy. Not a good trainer. He's a bag bum. Okay, he's boxer size. He's, he's Tyson Fury's mate. That's how he got into the boxing game, okay? By being friends with Tyson Fury. And even Tyson Fury, his friend, sacked him. Okay, so Josh Taylor's got to think about his career now. If, if there's any way whatsoever that he can reconcile with Shane McGuigan, I hope he does it. Can't see him doing it, but there's lots of trainers out there in British boxing that he could... Even It doesn't even have to be a, a, a British trainer. You know, he could go over to America and find a uh, experienced, very knowledgeable American trainer, or somewhere else, you never know. 
Um, but there, there's plenty of trainers in Britain who are more knowledgeable and who can get you back to the basics than um, somebody like Ben Davidson. So I, I think a few changes need to be made. But I'm not going to write this man off after one poor performance. Because I know what I see. And I know how good he is. So let's uh, wait and see. Let's pump the brakes. Let's stop with, with the hindsight knowledge. You know, to, talking about, oh, he, he's overrated. He's shit. Um, I knew this would happen because I'm so super duper smart. You know, let, let's, let's, let's pump the brakes here with Josh Taylor. And let's wait and see how he looks in his next fight. Because too many times boxing fans are reactionary emotional and they just can't be rational about these situations i expect him to look very good at welterweight and i am not writing him off if he fights the likes of spence crawford and ugas okay because he has the talent to beat those guys i'm telling you he does um i never thought jack catterall was an easy fight i i wanted to see the jack catterall fight for years because i always felt that it was a good fight i always did now, obviously, it wasn't a good spectacle, but I always felt it was a fight that would test Josh. So, let's see what happens here. Um, let me know what you guys think. I hope to see Josh Taylor fight again this year. Obviously, he's going to need to heal up his cuts, but I reckon he could fight again before the end of the year. And it has to be at welterweight. So, let's see what happens here. Let's not forget, guys, that Josh Taylor was fast-tracked. He was fast-tracked as a professional. He's had 19 professional fights and hard fights at that back-to-back -back undefeated opponents all right he's he's fought on the road he's a guy who has been in wars okay let's give the guy a break all right i i wouldn't blame josh taylor for taking a couple of lower level domestic level fights when he moves up to welterweight before challenging for a world title i think that i would advise him to do that if i was his manager which i'm not of course but yeah, I, I just think that there's there's a lot a lot to work with there. There's a lot of potential. He's 31 years old, so it's not exactly he's not exactly old, is he? So I think that it's it's uh, an interesting situation, and time will tell. But I'm telling you guys, it's not wise to write somebody like Josh Taylor off after one poor performance. So let me know what you guys think anyway. Thanks for watching. God bless.